this is the 80th anniversary for Hammond. It is. So it's, it's going to be huge. Yeah, this is the 80th year, the 80th year anniversary of the, of the Hammond organ, which, believe it or not, people may not know, but the Hammond organ has changed music. It has changed music. It's responsible for a lot, a lot of, of different shifts regarding music nowadays. You know, I've been with Hammond for a long time. Uh, I've been 15 years with the company. No matter what kind of music you play, uh, Hammond Organ will go in it if you play rock, soul, jazz, pop, country, hip hop, classical, avant-garde. You'll find Hammond Organ in, in all these music. I think that 2014 NAMM show, which is the 80th anniversary for the Hammond Organ Company, the people want to have the real thing and they want to feel it and they want to, they want to grab it and to play it. It's great to be here. It's so awesome to see uh, so many people uh, brought together uh, for NAM, for music, and Hammond being uh, the great foundation in jazz uh, that is. It's something how the soul, the sound of one, this organ, this instrument brings people together. You know, they used to have it in their home before it was in churches and in jazz clubs. The Hammond organ was just like a house thing, but people would come together and sing. It brought families together, you know, like food when you go to eat, you know, for dinner. I want to thank everyone for coming and uh, look forward to a killer show in about an hour. Uh, first, I'd like to introduce you to Stephen Fortner. Uh, the editor of Keyboard Magazine. Hammond Organ has been a part of my life and a part of Keyboard Magazine's life for, um, and Keyboard Magazine's readers' lives for a very, very long time. It is the Harley Davidson of American musical instruments. Um, no two are alike. We have um, a lot of very special guests uh, on their way tonight, and we are going to start off uh, by presenting the Milestone Award to the Hammond Suzuki Company. 80 years in the business. Yeah. Here is at that award is the president of the NAM organization, Mr. Joe Lamont. Right. Thanks for letting us come by for a moment or two just to uh, to share a few thoughts on, on this, this wonderful company that has been such a, a part of NAM for a very very, very, very long time. <laughs> um, Dan Del Fiorentino, who manages our resource library, he tells me that the uh, that the Hammond Model A was introduced at a NAM show in 1935. None of us were there. Is that correct? Can we just get that out of the way? None of us were at that one. And how many people have been influenced by these? inventions through the years. I mean, so many giants in the industry. Mr. Kakahashi will always, at Roland, will always talk about how he was moved by the sound of the Hammond organ. And uh, it continues today. And so uh, the legacy is uh, something that, uh, that the Suzuki family has carried on and brought these two beautiful companies together in 1985, I believe. And uh, so we're just so proud on behalf of the 9,000 companies of NAM. This is all a member organization. We are all part of one family. And so on behalf of, of those grateful participants in this industry and the show and uh, the people who help support music and bring music to the world, who help support music education, as your company does, probably the most important task on ahead of all of us, I would just like to honor your company with this Believe in Music ad for... Uh, 
Award for 80 years in business. Thank you very much. This is uh, Suji Suzuki. He is uh, the grandson of the founder of the Suzuki Music Corporation. And uh, on his behalf, I'm going to uh, read a short little speech. So please forgive me, my Japanese is not really good. <laughs> Thank you so much for this very great honor. We appreciate Joe and the NAM members and all they do for us, and all of the Hammond fans who have helped and supported the Hammond brand. On behalf of Hammond Suzuki Worldwide, Again, we thank you for this honor. The sound, the soul, the one, Hammond. Very nice. uh, we're going to read off a lot of names, but the uh, first inductee ever into the Hammond Hall of Fame is here tonight. He is one of those people who burned into our consciousness how the Hammond organ is supposed to be played. I'd like to invite him up here to say a word or two. Ladies and gentlemen, of Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, Mr. Keith Emerson. Thank you very much. Where's the hammer? <laughs> but I'm, I'm extremely honored, extremely honored to be uh, inducted into the Hammond Organ Hall of Fame. Um, yeah, going back to, uh, let me see when I started. Uh, Let's say the year 1960, I'd have been 16, and I heard Jimmy Smith on the radio, and uh, I thought, my God, what is that? But um, the next, the, the next uh, uh, jazz organist that I heard, which became the main inspiration of my life, actually, I tried to copy the, the actual sound he got from the Hammond, you know, very grungy organ sound. The album was uh, just called Live, and it was the Brother Jack and Duff Quartet. And uh, I'd like to accept this honor on behalf of Brother Jack. Um, he, and I actually happen to have his hat here. Wow. <laughs> anyway, once again, it's lovely to see you all. And uh, thank you, Hammond. Thank, thank you, Stephen, uh, for you know bringing me on here. And uh, enjoy the rest of the party. Yeah. Another one of our inductees is Booker T. Jones. Booker has been, uh, I believe, won two Grammys since uh, 2009 for Potato Hole and for The Road from Memphis. Uh, couldn't be here because he was digging, but his daughter Olivia. Thank you so much. Uh, on behalf of my father, it's an incredible honor. And you know, the Hammond has been something that's been a part of my family since we can remember. And so uh, it's a great honor to be in the, the first class. So thank you so much. Thank you. So here's the inaugural class. Greg Allman. Yeah. yeah. Brian Auger. Yeah. Felix Cavalieri. Yeah. Vicky Clark. <laughs> Jesse Crawford. <laughs> Joey DeFrancesco. <laughs> Barbara Dennerlin. Yeah. Pat Keith Emerson. Yeah. Porter Heaps. No, but these are the original people who got Hammond Organ started. Porter Heaps was the first guy to record at Hammond Organ. Bill Hurt. Ooh, yeah. Bill Hurt was the first guy to play Hammond Organ publicly. Richard Groove Holmes. Yeah. Booker right. yeah. 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 Al Cooper, and that's Cooper yeah. with a K. Eddie Layton? Yeah. yeah. And the man who proved that keyboards could be every bit as metal as guitarist, John Lord. Yeah. Jimmy McGriff? Oh. Yeah. The man who proved that like a tone wheel or the rotor of a Leslie, it does go round in circles, Billy Preston. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Greg Rowley of Journey in Santana. <laughs> Shirley Scott. <laughs> As we mentioned, Chester Thompson. Power, power. <laughs> and uh, who can forget Fats Waller? Oh, wow. Steve Winwood. <laughs> Larry Young. Smith. Yeah. Ethel Smith. Yeah. And this one is going to be really impossible for everyone to guess. Jimmy Smith. <laughs> one of the wonderful things about being in this industry, making musical instruments, writing about them, is getting to meet your heroes. And I don't think there's a Hammond organist alive who can say they were not influenced by Jimmy Smith. Yeah. Yes. We have one more award to um, uh, to mention, and um, it is the uh, first annual Lawrence Hammond Award, and uh, this goes to a inventor or technologist who uh, contributed indispensably to the legacy of the Hammond organ, and I think that uh, a lot of you probably know what I'm going to say. Mm -hmm. Uh, this was a, a guy, again, when I was a cub reporter at NAMM, I had the privilege of meeting once. It was my uh, the first NAMM show I ever went to. Uh, and I met Stevie Wonder and Ray Charles that day, and meeting the gentleman I'm about to name was, for me, ham and nerd that I am, a bigger thrill. And uh, without his invention, um, we would not be thinking of the Hammond in the same way. I'm not going to say that you know, the Hammond wouldn't be what it is or anything like that. But without this gentleman's invention, um, we would certainly be thinking of the Hammond and playing it very differently. And that is, of course, Don Leslie. Oh, yeah. Now we have Hammond and Leslie, 80 years later, under the same roof, sounding great together as they always have. And I am I, I'm sorry that Don can't be here, of course, but I'm sure he is looking down at us and saying, play on. Yeah. <laughs> and we are here tonight to celebrate the sound of the American musical instrument that is as rock and roll and as ballsy every bit, and maybe even a little more, depending on you as, as the electric guitar, and that is the Hammond organ.
down to it, music is the one single language that unites us all. It doesn't matter, uh, you've got people who might not care for each other, but if you get a song that they both like, they're united. You might get somebody who's this religion or that religion, or this color or that color, or this political stripe or this political stripe, but you can get 10 people in a room who might hate each other in other ways, but boy, you put on a song, a groove, something great and those people will dance with each other and that is something we have to learn from and I think that's what uh, that's where we're at so peace and thanks a lot here at the Jazz Keller in Frankfurt, Germany, and we are getting ready for the big music mess. But this is the famous Frankfurt Jazz Keller. This is the oldest jazz keller in Europe. This is a really historic place. It's a total honor to play in a place where Dizzy and Bird and Satchmo and everybody play. So. Hi, everybody. I'm John Hammond. I want to invite everybody to come in the very special Jazz Keller Frankfurt. And it's a special occasion tonight 
because we finally hit the 80th anniversary of Hammond organs, and I'm going to lay it on. I'm Bertie Capicano, I come from Melbourne, Australia. I've been a Hammond fan for most of my life. I love Hammond and certainly it's great to be here to celebrate 80 years of Hammond. Of course, it's a long time for any company these days. Hammond was an important part of my life because at the age 15 I fell in love with a Hammond, seeing a Hammond on stage. And by uh, uh, within 10 years I was selling Hammonds. In 1994, we took on the distribution for Hammond, and we're very proud to be the national distributors for Hammond and have dealers all around Australia enjoying selling Hammonds and playing Hammond, Hammond music. So it's a wonderful part of life to be able to do that. Of course, Hammond here at Frankfurt, uh, this is where it all happens. Frankfurt, I, this is my 35th time that I've come to Frankfurt. I first came in 1979, so 35 times to Frankfurt, and Hammond's been an important part of nearly every one of those. So it's great to be here. And thanks for saying hello.